Good morning, Greater Fellowship, and welcome to the Ship Virtual. We're so grateful to see your smiling faces for our Sunday Live experience. Wow, it's another day's journey, and I'm glad, so glad about it. Are you glad about it? I'm glad about it. Hey, is this your first time viewing us? Is your first time viewing us live um, online? Type in the comment section, first time. If this is your first time viewing with us, we want to love on you. Type first time in the comment section. If you're coming back and you've been here before, you've heard the words of the Lord through this message and this broadcast, you've experienced the camaraderie of our brothers and sisters in Christ, and you're back again, we want to love on you as well. Type in the comment section two words, I'm back. We want to love on you as well. We're so grateful for every single one of you out there. How in the world are you doing on today? All right, do me a favor. We're going to start our meet and greet moment. I want you to say hello to one of our first time viewers or returning viewers or someone you used to just hang out and roll with when we was going to church every Sunday. All right, so I want you to say hello in our meet and greet section. And I'm going to give you some information that you can chew on and be available to you this week. Our youth have resources that are available online at greaterfellowship.org. If you visit our website and tap the youth and children's resources, you will be able to get some resources for our young people. And so we're asking if you want to entertain our young people with the word or engage our young people with the word, we'd ask that you would visit our website and tap the youth and children's resources that are available right there. Did you know we have a YouTube page? That's right, we have a YouTube page. If you'd go to YouTube and type Greater Fellowship Charlotte, we should pop up. I want you to click that subscribe button. I want you to subscribe to our channel and I want you to hit that bell so that you can get the notifications whenever we go live. So I want you to be prepared to view us on that. Here's what can happen with YouTube. YouTube can be viewed by anybody, whether they're on Facebook or social media or not. So if you have someone who can't see us because they're not on social media, they can go to YouTube and watch us and you can send it to them, all right? Okay, are you celebrating a birthday this week? We want to celebrate you. So if your birthday is this week, type down in the comment section, what day you were born? What day is your birthday? If you're celebrating a birthday between Sunday today and Saturday, what day is your birthday? We want to say happy birthday to you. Did you get hitched some time ago this week? We want to celebrate those who are celebrating their nuptials, their wedding anniversary. If you got married some time ago between Sunday and Saturday, we want to love on you as well. Type down in the comment section your wedding anniversary and how long you've been married. We want to love on you. We celebrate weddings and monogamy and relationship here at Greater Fellowship. So we're grateful to those who are celebrating their nuptials on this week. All right. Yeah, man, it's time for, you know what time it is. What time is it? It's time for the word. Got a special treat for you this week. Rudy Currents is coming. He's our artist in residence. He has been blessing us. He started with us last month. He's been with us and he's been blessing us by popular demand. And so we're grateful to God that he's blessing us again with another selection before we hear the preach word. And this week, we have a special treat for you. My good friend, Pastor Jared Fight, the Reverend Dr. Jared Fight. He's coming to bless us. He's coming to bring the word of God to us on today. So I want you to prepare your hearts, prepare your minds to receive this word. After Rudy blesses us with song, it'll be time for the word. My 
glory, my glory, yeah, yeah, yeah bird. I want to find rest beyond the river. I believe I'll sing it again. somebody today that you can find rest in Jesus beyond the river I, I want to find rest beyond the river Good morning to the Greater Fellowship Baptist Church. It is such an honor to be with you on this day for God has blessed us. And I believe that this is the day that the Lord has made and I will rejoice and be glad in it because from the rising of the sun to the going down of the same, he's worthy to be praised. I believe Psalm 34 was right when it says, I'll bless the Lord at all times and his praises shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make her boast in the Lord and the humble shall hear thereof. Oh, magnify. Hey, I like that right there. The Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. Listen, my grandmama always used to say a saint shouldn't have to praise them by themselves. But then she followed it up by saying, I will if I have to. Uh, if you don't mind, please go with me to God in prayer. Gracious God, our Father, we first want to say thank you. Thank you for our life, health, and our strength. Thank you for the ways you've made, the doors you've opened. Father, we have to be honest in this place. We can do nothing until you come. God, right now, anoint this space. Because if the truth be told, we haven't gotten everything right. We haven't dotted every I or crossed every T. Father, we're not here because of who we know, our last name, or even where we went to school. But Father, if the truth be told, we're only here because of your grace and your mercy. Hey, and Father, I can't testify for anybody else. So I'll testify for myself. Mercy mm, suits my case. So Father God, right now have mercy on us. God have mercy on me. 
take control of my head and my heart, my mind and my mouth. And Father, have thine own way. In Jesus' name we pray. And the blessed people of God that believed it said amen. I want to thank my good friend, Pastor Shears, and his lovely wife and their beautiful family for this opportunity to be with you, Greater Fellowship Church, on this great getting up Sunday morning. Uh, if you don't mind, uh, jump with me, if you will, to the book, the Hebrew hymn book of Psalms. Right there in the book of Psalms, if you put your finger in the middle of the Bible and open it up, Psalm 117, they say, is the middle of the Bible. But I just want you to go back one uh, hymn to Psalm 116, and that will house our thought for today. Psalm 116, starting at verse number 12. Psalm 116, starting at verse number 12. When you when you get there, you should see these words from the thundering diction of the King James Version of the Bible. You should see these words. It should say, what shall I render, mm, my God, unto the Lord for all his benefits towards me? Hallelujah. What shall I render to the Lord for all of his benefits towards me? And for the moments in time we have to share from that one verse, I want to talk to you from the simple subject, how to be debt free. Mm, God have mercy. How to be debt free. I must testify, I haven't always done what I was supposed to do financially to handle my responsibilities. As a matter of fact, I've mastered the art of writing checks. I've wrote some good checks. That means those checks that when I wrote them and gave them to the person I was writing it to, that check was good at the time I wrote it. <laughs> not only that, but not, not only have I wrote good checks, but I've also, uh, I also wrote floating checks. Uh, this check was, uh, it was not good when I wrote it, but by the time I wrote it and they were going to put it in their bank and then their bank communicated with my bank, then the money would have been there by then. That's how you float a check. Not, not only, not only did I, did I, did I write good checks? Not only did I write floating checks, but can I tell you, I also wrote what, what I like to call hot checks. <laughs> <laughs> that that check, that check wasn't good when I wrote it. It wasn't good to the person that I wrote it to when they put it in their bank. And most likely it wasn't going to be good uh, when it made it to my bank. Mm, God have mercy. And with this kind of experience of writing good checks and floating checks, as well as writing bad checks, let me tell you about an experience when I was in college. It was roughly 20, uh, roughly 2002. Yes, God, 2002. I am a, a student at the North Carolina Central University where the eagle is no common ordinary barnyard fowl. I'm walking the verdant greens and the rolling hills of North Carolina Central University and I had a bank account. I moved off of campus and I'm living in an apartment complex. And can I tell you, when I went in to get my apartment, I wrote me a check for the deposit. Not only did I write me a check for the deposit, but I wrote me a check for bills. Uh, yes, God, for that apartment. I was driving a car and I went to the gas station and I got gas. Oh, God. And I, I wrote me a check. Not only that, but I needed some groceries. So I went down to the grocery store. We had a place called Kroger. I went to Kroger grocery store and I bought me some groceries and you guessed it. I wrote me a check. Now, mind you, I'm telling you about the checks I wrote, but I'm not telling you about the deposits that I made because at that time, Time, the checks I was writing didn't meet the deposits that I was given. <laughs> And so what ended up taking place was uh, I got a refund check. I wanted to float these checks long enough to be able to get my refund check, but my refund check didn't come in on time because if you've ever been to a historically black college or university, something ends up happening with your financial aid. I wish I had somebody to help me testify. And so as I am uh, getting ready and sitting in tiptoe anticipation for my refund check, uh, uh, 
my bills are piling up, so I got to write some checks. Now, not making any deposits, I'm writing checks. But once I get my refund check from the Bursar's office of North Carolina Central University, I then get in my car, drive to the bank, and I say, I need to talk to a banker because I want to try to satisfy my debt. I know I got a big debt. I, I this, is, this is the time way before internet I got real big when my account was online. And guess what happened? They had to pull my ledger. They pulled my ledger. They looked at things and they said, we're going to allow you a chance to speak with somebody. And her name was Nolene Huntley. Miss Nolene Huntley at the bank, at the credit union. She, she, she pulled and looked at my ledger and she said, what seems to be the problem? I said, well, as you can see, I've been writing checks without any deposits. And I, I got a check in my hand, my refund check. And I want to satisfy my debt that I owe to this bank. And she said, wait a minute, you've been writing bad checks. I said, yes, I've been writing bad checks. She said, you know, you can't say that out loud because you will go to jail for doing something like that. I said, I ain't built for prison. I ain't built for jail. I, I cannot go to jail. And she she looked, she said, let me look at your account again. She pulled my ledger and she opened it up. And as she's looking at my ledger, can I tell you what she told me? And I want to shout right through here. She told me your account is in good standing. I, I I didn't want to ask any questions. I just told them thank you right through there because sometimes God will do some things you don't understand and he'll still help you in the midst of your troubles. Have you ever been in a valley situation before and God turned it around in your life? Have you ever been in a trial or a tribulation and God worked it out? Have you ever been standing behind a closed door and God says, I want that door to be open? Well, in those moments in time, those divine moments where we're able in our human existence to see the move of God, we ought to say thank you. Are you here this morning to be able to testify? I owe him a thank you. I owe him a thank you because everything he's done for me. Oh God, I'm getting too happy too early. Everything he's done for me, I owe him a thank you. Can I just tell you the top three reasons I feel like you owe him a thank you is because he woke you up this morning. <laughs> Hey, started you on your way and clothed you in your right mind, gave you a reasonable portion of life, health, and strength. He didn't let your last night be your last night. He didn't let your bed be your cooling board, nor your sheets be your winding sheets. Did I give you three? Oh, I'm sorry. I may have gave you more than that. But the truth of the matter is, as I think of the goodness of Jesus and all that he's done for me, my soul cries out, hallelujah. Thank God for saving me. And just like I was in the bank, same is true for David in the life of our text as he is as he takes pen to parchment for our preaching on this morning. When you come to understand David here, David begins to outline for us what it is and the reason why he's got to say thank you. When, when you start looking at this particular text, it will help you every time. This is what is affectionately known as Hebrew hills to Shikta. It's the story of the Hebrew people. This is, this is the Hebrew hymn book. This is the book in which of adoration and praise, thanksgiving is given in, 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 in musical form. And when, and when you start looking at this text, it starts to shout you even from the first verse all the way to the end because the first verse says, I love you, Lord. When you get to Psalm 116, he, he declares, I love you, Lord. I have a case of the I can't help it. And not only not only that, this is this is the place where he says, is, is I got favor from God and that's why I love him so much. It's because he favored me in my times of trouble. Verse number three, he says, I should have died, but God kept me alive. <laughs> God have mercy. How many can have that testimony where you can declare uh, that in the season of the things that I have gone on in my life, other people died in it, but God let me survive through it. Have you been through a circumstance in your life where you can testify? I came out on the other side. Won't it? Do okay. Amen. Let me, let me press on. Let me Jay walk through this real fast because in verse number 11, before we get to verse number 12, watch what he says. He says, 
I've discovered that all men are liars. Basically, literally, he means I thought I can trust some people. Have you ever been there like David and declared, I thought I can trust some folk? I thought I can lean on some people. I thought I can, oh, God have mercy. Some folk smiled in my face but talked about me behind my back. There are people who lied on me, slandered my name, and didn't speak of me what they should have. But God still held me. God have mercy. And when you get right here now uh, to this text, when you get to verse number 12, he asked the question, after all of these benefits that God has given unto me, he asked the question, what? shall I render? <laughs> what shall I render unto the Lord for all of his benefits? I know you're asking why is he preaching this this morning? The reason why I'm preaching this this morning is because some of us are not only are we bougie at home, but we become bougie in worship. Some of us are so bougie in worship that we find ourselves saying it don't take all of that. Well, I like to affectionately tell people if you didn't wake me up, then you ain't gonna shut me up because the truth of the matter is everything I have, every part of my being, every breath I take, the credit belongs to Almighty God. And I got to ask myself, if I begin to look at my tab, I'm in debt to heavenly, the heavenly throne. I'm in debt to God because God has continued to bless my life in spite of my life. I'm in debt because the truth of the matter is I got a poignant question to ask you this morning. What would you pay uh, for air to be able to breathe? What would you pay for hearing in your ear? What will you be able to pay for, for, for feeling in your fingers? What would you be able to pay for strength in your legs? What would you pay uh, for a sound out of your vocal cords. And can I tell you, God has yet to send us an invoice for the stuff he's given us and for the ways he made. So as a result, I'm in debt because I cannot afford any of the blessings that God has bestowed upon me. But God says there is a way to pay me back, but you don't have Visa, Master, or Black to be able to satisfy this debt. So I asked the Lord through the life and the pen of David, how do we pay God back? Well, the first thing I want to teach you in this life of this text is if we're going to pay God back, number one, we have to accept his perfect plan. Mm hmm. You heard me correctly. Number one, we have to accept his perfect plan. Accept. We have to accept his perfect plan plan. Mm, God have mercy. Counter to televangelists telling you that you can buy your way out of your valley. Uh, 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 there's another way that you can pay God back. See, some televangelists want you to believe that you can get some oil and you can order it for $39.99. They'll ship it to you. You can put that oil on your checkbook mm -hmm, and you'll become debt free. They got some water from the Arabian Sea and they'll be able to take that water and you can pour that water all over your house and you'll have a blessed house. But the truth of the matter is, if you don't have any oil, if you don't have any of that water, you still uh, can get what you need. How is that relevant? Because when you look at the life of this text and when you begin to look at what it says, when you jaywalk down to verse number 13, it declares uh, that you have to take or sip from the right cup. I, you think I'm making it up. I promise you it's right here in the life of the Bible. When you look at it in verse number 13, it says, I will take the cup of salvation and call upon the name of the Lord. That's what verse number 13 says. I'm not making this up whatsoever. That when you look at verse number 13, if number one, if I'm going to accept his perfect plan, I got to sip from the right cup. God have mercy. Have you ever sipped from that cup before? Have you ever sip from the cup of salvation? Maybe you don't even understand about the cup of salvation because you may be confused about what cup I'm talking about because the truth of the matter is the Bible speaks of 26 different cups that's outlined and laid out in the Bible. I don't have time to preach all 26, but let me see if I can give you a few of them. Number one is the cup of human suffering. You find this cup when Jesus is in the garden of Gethsemane and before he's on his way to the cross. Okay, I thought I was going to have a better response than that because I'm talking uh, to Greater Fellowship Baptist Church. Let me see if I can say it one more time. He's on his way to the cross. 
okay, you missed the context, so let me give it to you one more time. Jesus is in the Garden of Gethsemane, and he's on his way to the cross. I ain't got time to talk about the cross right now, but can I just say one part of it? They hung him high. Okay, I'll come back to that in just one second. But he's on his way to the cross, and while he's on his way, he sneaks away and begets some devotion and solitude time, and in that time, he says to the Lord, pass this cup from me, <laughs> but not thy, not my will, but thy will be done. I, I wish I had some help right through here. They can testify that I understand what Jesus was going through because I recognize the human suffering that he's about to experience. Have you ever suffered before that you've had to sip through the cup of cancer? You've had to sip through the cup of diabetes. You've had to sip through the cup of headache and heartache. You've had to sip through the cup of pain and misery, trial and strife. Have you ever had to sip through the cup of human suffering? And you can testify just like Jesus had to go through to know how I feel. Uh, then I have to understand that it's okay for me to go through because Jesus understands and he can fix it. Not only is there a the cup of human suffering, um, God have mercy, but watch this. There's also the cup of divine blessing. Mm. Let me do a little Missy Elliott real fast and let me stop, drop, flip it and reverse it. Because when you get to the 23rd installment of Psalms, you see the cup of divine blessing because he says, I believe it's around verse number 25 of the 23rd Psalm that he prepares a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. But not only that, he has a cup on the table and he pours in that cup and the text says that that cup overflows. I love this so much because God loves me so much that he puts me at a table and he, he, he appoints the audience to be people who are naysayers over my life and he allows them a free ticket to watch me be satisfied. <laughs> oh God. And when you come to the place where you say, you know what? Any way you bless me, Lord, I will be satisfied. Any door you open, I will be satisfied. Any way you make, I will be satisfied. Any trial you fix, I will be satisfied because God knows how to fix it and he has a divine blessing in spite of the audience that's in the room. That's the cup of human blessing, uh, the cup of divine blessing, but then there's the cup of human suffering. But thirdly, in this text, in this text, I got to keep on pressing. I've already held you too long. Let me get to my second point because in this text, he says, if you want to pay me back, you got to drink from the cup of salvation. Now, I better be careful about this cup because this cup, mm, God have mercy, just one sip of this cup will change your whole entire life. Just one drink, just one sip, just one sip of this cup mm, will take you from your past life to a brand new life where you can begin to sing. I looked at my hands and they look new. I looked at my feet and they do too. People from your old days will remember who you used to be and say, I remember when, but the good news is that's back in the wind and not in the now. <laughs> and when you look at your life, you can declare as I look back over my life and I begin to think things over, I got to testify. I I am blessed. I'm so blessed to have a God who decides to look beyond my faults and still meet me at my knees. It's called salvation. I got a God who took me from uh, being a drug dealer to being a good deacon in the church. I got a God who's taken me from, from promiscuity and allowed me an opportunity to find real love in my life. I got a God who decided to take me and put me under the fountain because there there is a fountain filled with blood and is drawn from Emmanuel's vein. When you drink from this cup, he will save your life. I like it. I heard a preacher one time say you're either saved from something or you're still in the something <laughs> that you need to be saved from. And I wish I had a remnant of believers. Matter of fact, let me get four people that can testify. And I promise you, I'll make five that can testify. I've been saved from something. Mm. That's the first step of paying God back. 
is that you got to drink oh, from the right cup. You got to drink from the right cup. Not only uh, do you got to accept his perfect plan, but number two, you have to admire him in praise. Mm -hmm. You have to admire him in praise. I, I wish I was making this up, but I promise you, I, I can't make this kind of stuff up here. When you admire him in praise, that's also in verse number 13, because it says, take the cup uh -huh, of salvation. But then watch what it says. It says, call upon the name of the Lord. Now, see, this is a public alleration that you begin to call upon his name when you recognize the transformation that he's given in your life. So if you're going to pay God back for what services that God has rendered to you, you have to not only accept his plan, but then you have to admire him in praise. <laughs> God have mercy for those of you who don't like to holler. This point ain't going to be satisfying to you because you're going to have to stay in debt because you don't know how to call on his name. But I wish I had a hollerer right through here. And I know we in a virtual distance from one another, but we just mm, upset the people in your house right now, upset your neighbors right now. If you're in an apartment complex and you stay on the second floor, if you allow the first floor people uh, just to get a little uncomfortable right through here because you got to step real fast and you got to open up your mouth and you got to be able to just tell them thank you. I don't know how you do it. You may, as the Hebrews say, you may karar, wheel around in a circle. You may shabak, say it with an uplifting voice. You you may, I don't know how you do it. The Hebrew Bible got about 16 ways to adore him. Uh, yes, God. And it don't matter which one you choose this morning, but the Bible says if you're going to pay him back, you got to call on his name in praise. And I don't know where you are in here, but I got to praise my only God. I got to praise the God who sits high and looks low. I got to praise the God that's able to heal me and deliver me and set me free. I can't be the only one that say I got a reason to give him glory. I got a reason to open up my mouth. And when you begin to look at all of your reasons that you have, you can testify God has been good to me. He's been so good to me. He led me through divorce where they left with the blender and I left with the toaster, but he still show me that he's God. I got a God who saw me in surgery, but woke me up in recovery. God has been good to me. I got a God who, when I was ready to snap, crackle, and pop somebody in the face, he handcuffed my hands and said, let the Lord fight your battles. I got a God who keeps on making a way. I got a God who told me no weapon formed against me shall be able to prosper. I got a God who let me know when your enemies and your foes come upon you to eat of your flesh, they'll stumble and fall. I got a God that keeps on making a way and I can't be the only one that's, that serves that same God that can testify that he keeps on making a way and I owe him some praise. Mm, I owe him. I owe him. I owe him big time. I, I owe him big time. It should be in your nature to give God glory. It, it should be in your nature to give God glory. If if a duck, who God, it's in their nature to quack and swim. If uh, if a bird, it's in their nature to sing and fly. If, if it's in the nature, in the nature of a dog to bark and a cat to meow, then it should be in a Christian's nature to give him glory. And when people uh, want to ask you questions about why you're doing all of that, what, what seems to be the problem, you just tell them, I'm just operating and how God created me. He created me here with a voice to be able to open up my mouth and tell them thank you. If they don't want to believe your voice, tell them to believe Psalm 150 that says, let everything that has breath praise ye the Lord. I got to get out of here. I've already held you too long and I know some of you got a roast cooking right now and you smell it as I'm talking and I don't want to get between you and your roast. So let me see if I can give you this third one wing. And I promise you, I get out of here because not only do we have to accept his perfect plan, not only do we have to admire him in praise, but third and finally, we have to acknowledge him in public. Mm. We have to acknowledge him in public. Go down to verse number 14. And I promise you, I'll close right there. When you go down to verse number 14, it says, I will pay my vows unto the Lord now in the presence of all of his people. That's what it says. It not only says, what shall I render in verse number 12? 
but then in verse number 13, it tells you how to render it. Take the cup and then open up your mouth and give them glory. But when people show up in your space in verse 14, admit he's your friend. Admit he's your father. Admit he is your, the one you're devoted to. When you begin to admit in public that he's the one you're devoted to, then you will let everybody know that God is the one who's keeping me. I want to let everybody know I'm not too smart. I'm not smart enough to possess the blessings that God has blessed me with. I don't have enough degrees on my wall to be able to deserve uh, the places that God has allowed me to be placed. I, I, I am not too kind all the time to be able to say I deserve the woman that I'm married to. But the truth of the matter is God looked beyond my faults. <laughs> hey, I got to get out of here and still met me at my needs. I used to up the street, right from your church, up street at the Marvin Amy Zion Church, where I used to serve as the youth pastor of the Marvin Amy Zion Church in Waxhaw, North Carolina, right down the street from you in South Charlotte, right outside of Ballantyne. Uh, uh, I, I served as the youth pastor. I had a young lady who came to youth worship, and as I'm greeting the children as they're coming in uh, to youth worship, uh, watch what ends up happening. She says, she says, uh, she says, Minister Fight, uh, I, I want to tell you something. I said, What do you want to tell me? She said, She says, I have a boyfriend. I shouted in the hallway. Uh, okay. Some of y'all know that there's other options today. So you got to shout about when they got the right option. I ain't come here to talk about that, but she said, uh, I got a boyfriend. I said, okay, praise God. You got a boyfriend. What seems to be the problem? She said, I, I got a boyfriend. Hold my hand when we at school in public. Uh, but, but, but when we in the movies, he want to be all on me. I got a problem. Well, why can't he hold my hand in public? I said, this is what you need to do. This is real fast. We got churches about to start in five minutes. And so I don't have time to walk you through the whole process. I'm going to give you the cliff notes version and you'll be able to, this will help you and bless your life and his. Number one, what you need to do is you need to go buy a thank you card. Number two, you need to go get you a box of band-aids. Now, now the, now the thank you card going to be self-explanatory um, because you're going to thank him for his services that he's rendered. Uh, but then the band-aid going to need a little explanation because not only are you thanking him, but he going to need the band-aid because you got to let him know he's been cut from your team because anybody who can't acknowledge you in public but want to be all up on you in private is not somebody who really loves you. You got to recognize that, that when you say you love God, you just don't go to your prayer closet and want to talk to him in private, but he wants to know when you get in public, will you still acknowledge me? <laughs> That's my sermon for the day. And so as I leave out of here, I know some of you are wondering, you have haven't heard anything I said. You you haven't you got to go back and watch this because uh, you hadn't heard that I got to accept his perfect plan. You hadn't heard that I got to admire him in praise. You hadn't heard that I got to uh, 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 acknowledge him in public because you are still at the bank in North Carolina in Durham, North Carolina. As I got my refund check, because you're trying to figure out how in the world was his account in good standing after he spent all that money and he did not make any deposits. I'm so glad that you ask. And since we're here today, I want to be able to bless you and put this in your Easter basket so you can go ahead and shout with me. As I leave you today, as I'm sitting in No Lee Huntley's office, I get up and I'm about to walk out the door. But as I walk out the door, Nolene Huntley says to me, uh, fight, do you not want to know why your account is in good standing? Now, I got a problem. I got these two pixies on my shoulders and one pixie is a good pixie. He says, yes, you want to know why. But the bad pixie on the other side said, mm -mm, keep on walking. You don't want to know a thing about how your account ended up in good standing. You know better. You know that you didn't make no deposits. You know you didn't do what you're supposed to do. And you got this check in your hand right now to satisfy your debt. And so I, 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 I turned around and I listened to the good pixie and I said to Miss Huntley, I said, yes, tell me how my account got in good standing. I want to tell you what she told me. She said, the only reason your account is still in good standing is because your account is connected to your daddy's account. Hey, <laughs> goodbye, greater fellowship. May the Lord bless you. And next time I see you, because the truth of the matter is the only reason why I was able to walk out of that bank without being handcuffed the only reason why I never saw a prison cell is because I got a father who made sure there was enough in 
his account that as long as he had money in his account, even though I may not have had it in my hand, his account satisfied my debt. And can I tell you why that's relevant to the life of, to, to my life and your life? The reason why that's relevant is because hell uh, is, is really where we should deserve to go. But the truth of the matter is, since my account is connected to my father's account, since I've accepted his perfect plan, since I, oh God, admire him in praise, and when I acknowledge him in perfect, he says, I have an account to cover your missus. Mm. Yes, God, have mercy. I have a, an account to handle your allegations. I got an account to handle your situations. I got an account to handle your trial and your tribulations. And I know some of y'all asking the real difficult question. How can God pay for all of that? Can I tell you how he paid for it? And then I'm leaving. One Friday morning, they put a cross on his shoulders and he carried it up a hill called Calvary. They hung him high and they stretched him wide. Didn't he die? I believe he died. The Matthew said he died. Mark said he died. Luke said he died. John said he died. So guess what? I guess he died. He died when the earth began to rock and reel. He died when the moon was dipped in blood. He died when the earth spit up their dead and gave up the incorruptible. He died where the temple, who, yes, God, was ripped in twain. He died where there was a crook on the cross who gave his life. But a centurion said, don't forget about me. He died. Didn't he die? I believe he died to the point where they took a spear and put it in his side and out came flowing blood and water. But the truth of the matter is they took a borrowed tool and took his body down and put it in there. But if you read the Bible, right, when you get to the book of Revelations, he took a Saturday night special and he went to hell to pay out a lease. Matter of fact, let me say it better. He went to hell to pay out my lease. And the Bible says that early, God have mercy, I say early, y'all, early one Sunday morning, he got up with all power in his hand. Early one Sunday morning, he rose so that you and I can have a, a debt-free life. He rose so that we can be able to live according to his will and his plan. He rose. Yes, he did. He he got up, he got up, he got up, yes, he got up, and I believe that when I think about his getting up power and how it applies to my life, I got to tell him thank you, yes, I do, because he's been too good for me not to say thank you. <laughs> thank you, Greater Fellowship. It's been kind to be with you this morning. And until next time, God bless you in heaven. Smile upon you. Amen. Wow. Wow. It's decision time. On your screen, you'll see some options there. And we want, to, we want you to answer this question. Where are you in your relationship with Jesus Christ? Are you an A, a B, a C, or a D? Wherever you are, we want you to put that down in the comment section. If you're an A, B, C, or D, type that down in the comment section. We want you to know where you stand with God. We don't try to get into your business. We're not trying to get all in your Kool-Aid. We just simply want you to know and recognize where you stand with the Lord. Maybe you don't want to make this a public declaration. You would love to do this a little bit more private. You can do that. Visit our website, greaterfellowship.org. In the bottom right hand corner, you'll see a silver circle that says, I have decided. Click on that circle and there you can make that declaration and that decision for, to, for Jesus Christ on today. Or maybe you want to reach someone a little bit more directly. Maybe you need prayer or you want to join the church. Um, I want you to text Jesus to the number that's in the corner. Text Jesus to that number and you can reach us and we will reach you. And we will get you started on the journey with a relationship with Christ. Whatever you got to do, don't let nothing hinder you and stop you from getting a relationship or bettering your relationship with Jesus. Let me say a prayer for you. God, we thank you for those that have made decisions on today. We thank you for their courage. Bless them now even more. In Jesus' name, amen. Come on, let's get some hallelujah hands in the comment section for those who have made decisions on today.
today. We praise God for you. Okay, it's giving time. It's giving time. On the screen, you'll see some options that will be available to you to give your tithes and offering. It is still more blessed to give than to receive. And so we're asking that you would sow your, si your seed of tithes and offering into the Lord's church here at Greater Fellowship. If you're not a member, that's fine. Sow where you grow. That's what you got to do. You got to sow where you grow. And if you're growing from this broadcast, then sow into this broadcast. Amen? Amen. All right. That concludes our worship experience on today. We thank you all for being a part of it. We thank Dr. Jared Fight for blessing us with that word on today. And we'd ask that you'll put this in someone's inbox. Share this with somebody. It's a mighty word. It's a special word. It's a powerful word. It's a life-changing word. I need you to give it to someone so their life can be changed. All right? I send you love from up above. I love you. And there's nothing you can do about it. You're blessed in the city. You're blessed in the field. You're blessed coming. You are blessed going. You are blessed in any and everything that you do. Now may the grace of God and the sweet communion of his Holy Spirit rest ruler by with us henceforth now and forevermore. Amen, amen, and amen. God bless you. We'll see you soon.